What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Chopper channel, coming to you with another edition of Lindy's Links, his likes, his locks. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. Goes a long way for me on this video, goes a long way for you. That way, you become a prize whenever great content is going live here at our little neck of the YouTube woods. Yo, y'all, um, Kobe White, 12 quick ones, and then whatever. Here's the thing premium Discord, when you get the betting card, you know, an hour, hour and a half before lock there. I'm obviously curating it to that moment in time. It'd be ridiculous to say, hey, I bet this eight hours ago and then tell you, hey, this is better. 19 and a half. We got in at the ground level. He closes at 21 and a half, 22 and a half in some spots, which was egregious. Hopefully you can get there for us. But again, if you were at work all day, you jump in there. I'm always reacting to news. You should be too. And react to price too, because in 20 and a half, 21 and a half, I'll... The single game parlay thing, I thought it was going to end up being higher when it opened. Obviously, 25 plus was kind of like an egregious reach for it. Talked about it. We'll see. Anywho, we're going to be watching Jokic. We're going to be on Jokic watch here in the middle of this program. That game got underway, but we've got Friday. We've got eight games before us. Really exciting games and a lot of points props on the card today. I didn't expect that coming down the pipeline, but was revamping some stuff, trying to get all of my props in order, all my ducks in a row, things of that nature. And hey, hopefully we can make some money together here on Friday. Plus, we got some good stuff going on on Odd Shopper. It's now $15 a week, $49.95 for the month. We've got good things going on with BetMGM. We'll talk about all of that here later, but it's the freaking weekend, baby. Let's, ro let's party, let's ride. Broncos country, let's ride. They're playing on Saturday. My Vikings are playing Saturday. I'm already... It's Ty Chandler season, though. Producer Jacob, hi. Let's get to the picks. Oh, man, this has been a long one. My Thursdays, do you guys have those days of the week that are just absurd where it's like, hey, I got up at 6 a.m. and I walked the dog and then I had a show at 8 and then I had a show at 10 and then I had a show at 3.30 and then I had a show now at 6.30 and it's just like thing after thing after thing after thing after thing. But it's kind of what it's like to be a Charlotte Hornets fan. It's just a grind every single day. Every day is Thursday for those dudes because things aren't going well. Things aren't going well. And now the Pelicans are coming to town, taking on Charlotte in this spot. There's some injury news to be keeping apprised of. Not just Mark Williams here, but P.J. Washington listed as questionable. He got dinged up with that shoulder injury. He only played four minutes against Miami last time out. That's not ideal because then you're just looking at tons and tons of minutes of Nick Richards and then that JT Thor fellow who, when he's on a floor, is running wind sprints. So really fun for them. As for the Pelican side of things, Zion Williamson, he's the main guy to star, highlight, pay attention to. He's questionable entering this one, but if he ends up in, this is just a mismatch of epic proportions. Charlotte, no interior. You should be able to get whatever you want there. Jonas Valanciunas, another spot where he can feast. How about that 31 and a half PRA? Put that in your pipe and smoke it. It was delicious. Like a nice smoky brisket. It was delicious. But yeah, we got to pay very, very close attention here, friends, to news per usual. That's why we're going to just call it a lean minus seven here. I don't really have a firm stance on where Zion's going to land here yet. I felt like it was like more of a maintenance thing for him the other day with this ankle injury, but I don't know. I would really like him to be in to back him at seven. This probably moves to nine, nine and a half. I'm just going to revisit this in the morning and see if there's anything else I can figure out or just see where the sharp money is going. Sharp money should be going in Philly. What is this line? 16, the largest spread of the entire season. Yes, 16 points here, Philadelphia. They just went out and eviscerated Detroit in their building. Now they bring them back to their home. This should be. That's entertainment.com. This Joel Embiid fellow is pretty good, huh? Yeah. Duran's out. Bagley's out. Detroit's going to be starting Isaiah Stewart and James Wiseman. Best of luck to those two fellows against Joel Embiid, who basically treated them like little tiny, little little puppets. Oh, we're having fun. Joel Embiid, 31 minutes, 41, 11, and 5. This is getting dumb. Against Washington, 30 minutes, 34, 11, 6. I mean, obviously, this is the most blowout pro game that... I haven't seen spreads like this since the Golden State prime years, and yeah, they're far away from that now, that's for sure, but... I still think Joel Embiid, if they're going to go out and eviscerate him here, it's just going to be Embiid getting the ball nonstop here. 32 minutes of him probably gets the job done. He's averaging 33.8 points per game and just 34.2 minutes per game. 
And the matchup couldn't be easier. They're going to force feed him. His usage is out of control, north of 35% on the season. Like, everything is just pointing me in the direction of Joel Embiid over 34 and a half points. Got him for 37 here. Again, there's obviously blowout concerns, and it's going to look really good or it's going to look really bad pending the game flow to some extent. But there's no way that he's not getting close to 34 or 35. I mean, this is just absurd stuff that we're seeing here. So, again, I think he's putting up a 35, 36 spot. Two and a half points. That's enough of a gap for me to go half a unit, half an imperial credit. Make sure. Yeah. Let's just... Bojan, can you keep this somewhat close for me, bro? We're not going to bet his points, bro. Though, in a 16-point spread, get out of here. We go from a rid ridiculous, redonkulous points prop to a ridiculous total. The Pacers, the Wizards, and oh my God, look at that total. It is so big. It's like one of those rapper girls totals. Rapper boyfriend. Whatever, I screwed it up. It's all right. But I like big spreads, and I cannot lie. And this one, another eight and a half or you know, we got big spreads. Actually, I don't like big spreads. It's pretty much the exact opposite. But I like the big... You know what I'm getting at. I like... Talking myself into a corner. All right, y'all. Let's talk Indy. And uh, yeah, they didn't play a whole lot of defense on that Giannis guy. He seemed upset. Did you see his shot chart, though? Please pull up the shot chart. Everybody needs to look at the shot chart. Every shot Giannis took was inside of three feet. Every shot he made was inside of three feet. It was absurd. What are the Pacers doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? You got to make adjustments or do something. But hey, the Pacers, you know what they're going to do. They're just going to go out and try to run you down and up and down the floor and play at breakneck speed. Uh, ludicrous speed. It's from Spaceballs. It's where my brain goes here at uh, infinity o'clock. But 104.2 possessions per 48 minutes. The Wizards. Second in pace, 103.8 possessions per 48 minutes. Really, the only thing that stops this from being a jam on the over is the fact that Washington is terrible at offense efficiency. 111.2 for an adjusted offensive rating, considering that pace. That's literally the number of points that we're talking about for 100 possessions, adjusted for strength of schedule. And, like, they're 26th in the NBA despite being second in pace. So... I have this north of this 257 and a half total, obviously, but instead of being a jam, because the Pacers, all they do is go for overs. 20 of 26 games. What are we doing here, guys? What are we doing here? No, I'm asking you a question. Would you like to tell me? Because I'm very confused. I'm very confused. Every freaking game, we're looking at an over of this team, and maybe we should just do that every single game. Because it's been fruitful. And by the way, it's 18 and four to the over. 18 and four. So out of 22 games, wanted to double check my work. I knew that I had that written on my sheet wrong. But 18 and four, 18 or 20 freaking six damn games. Well, 22 damn games. 257 and a half. We like it. We, we like an over on a Pacers game. There's a shocker. These are make believe total make believe totals. There, there. I pointed to it correctly. Friends, Odd Shopper, OS Premium Tools. We have been crushing over in the Discord here. Whether it's myself on some days, Ben Raza in soccer, the dude comes in, just smashes international soccer in the mornings, makes for a nice sweat throughout the entire day. I must say, it's an enjoyable experience. I suggest joining it. We also have my guy Aton Chander in the Parlay Streets. We have my guy Nathan Joyce out there in the Twitter streets, putting together the shorts, putting together the videos that you know and love on the Twitters. Guys, jump in. Get in for $14.95 for the week. But it's not just that Discord and the amazing people, but it's the OS Premium Tools, the holy grail of what we do here on this program, the market-based approach, talking about comparing to sharp books. I know I try to be entertaining. I know I try to be funny from time to time, and 99% of the time I fail. But you know what? I don't fail at giving you good information, giving you plausible information that you can act on, and I don't give out bets that I don't believe in and bets that are just bad. And you know what's taught me what bad bets are? Looking at OS and seeing massive negative EV in a lot of these spots. We're trying to react to injuries. We're trying to react to things that are more projection-based, but at the same time, comparing across multiple books is how you get your edge as a professional better, as somebody who takes this seriously. So get yourself over into the Odd Shopper Premium Tools. Get yourself acquainted with the Fantasy Optimizer for Underdog and Prize Picks. Get yourself acquainted with the Parlay Builder. If you're building out two, three, five, ten leg parlays, you crazy people, I know you're doing it. Make sure that they're EV by checking out that Parlay Builder and everything else we have at the OS Premium Tools Market. 
Oh, and get it for 20% off when you use promo code LINDY. 20% off, friends. Those expert picks in the Discord, the Discord itself, the premium tools, all in one package. Put a bow on it. Put it under the tree. It is going to get unwrapped for $15 for the week. And obviously, this becomes $12 if you do 20% off code LINDY. That's all. You can sign up for that down below. Back to the picks we go. Orlando taking on Boston here in this spot. And hey, we might see Markel Fultz back in our lives. But I want to just give Orlando a special shout out. I know that it's a back-to-back. -back. Very, very aware. But five and a half against Boston? That deserves some respect. That should tell you how different this Orlando team is compared compared to like natural convention, wisdom, whatever. They're a 16 and seven basketball team with a plus 1.7 adjusted net rating and they can play defense. Defense, 111.1 defensive, adjusted defensive rating. That is really good stuff. That is fourth in the entire association. Now, one thing I'm a little bit worried about is their strength of schedule because they haven't really faced any offensive juggernauts. 27th in adjusted offensive strength of schedule. But, but, Boston on a back-to-back, -back. potentially Jalen Brown, who is questionable entering Thursday. Does he play on the back-to-back? -back? I'm a little bit trepidatious, at least of that piece. And then Luke Cornett got ruled out from the clouds. I don't think that matters whatsoever here. But Orlando getting Markel Fultz back. That's great stuff. And they still have Wendell Carter waiting in the wings to get there. Although Goga, Goga, Goga. I think people are realizing that he's one of the better backup centers that existed in the association. Not a whole lot of love because he just does what he does. He just constrict shots and takes out space but like has pretty good defensive awareness can at least help in a pick and roll and not be a complete waste of space in that regard some guys like to sag back on those he's at least pressuring guys on the come up so jason tatum jalen brown in those pick and roll situations or Derek white coming off of them he'll at least challenge and i was watching a couple of these orlando games to be able to actually say stuff like that so it is what it is however boston obviously they're better they're the better team they should be favored but i'm leaning towards orlando plus five and a half because i think injury news could go away from you i'm more than likely staying away from this game all together unless I can somehow pinpoint exactly what Boston's going to do in the aftermath of their game here tonight. So wait and see. We will just chill. Just Netflix and chill. Waiting for our time to shine, friends. Yeah, this game's probably not all that appealing, though. Friends, Atlanta facing Toronto up north. Yeah. I don't know what I was saying. Way up north. That's the song. It's like a Western musical what i remember something anyway i also remember when atlanta didn't ruin my spreadsheet and make me spend an extra 20 minutes on it producer jacob's aware of that yeah here's the thing deandre hunter i had him as in he is questionable i think he's more than likely to play here and that would make a lot of these unders that exist well at least the presumptive unders make some sense but betting against atlanta been better than betting for atlanta toronto you're losing a little bit here considering the vague but it is what it is. Toronto's been the much better team here, and yet I don't think that's necessarily being quantified correctly, but I'm actually not looking at backing Toronto here in this spot. I think it's actually pretty efficient. Minus 142. If you want to put that in a parlay or two, just go ahead and enjoy. Clint Capella matching up pretty good here against Yaka Pertle, who's been playing more and more and more minutes because he's actually really good at basketball. We just had this very same matchup, and working through those minutes, Made it very easy to piece together what I think the rotations are going to be. And it just went 135-128. And now the total has gone up massively from where it was sitting at at 240 and a half at open last time. You know what that means? We're going under. Yeah, that's where we're going to be going, friends. Under 243 and a half. I've been, I will say, I've been hitting the unders on game totals at a pretty good clip. The overs have actually been underperforming outside of Indiana, which is a cheat code. So it is what it is. But under 243 and a half here in this spot, I think getting DeAndre Hunter back would definitely improve some of the wing capabilities here. And it would take Bogdanovich, you know, the guy who's knocking down like infinity shots, make it, putting up 40 a game, doing whatever the hell else he's been doing, stealing the ball a ridiculous amount too. I think his steal rates, he's got like one and a half steals per game now over the course of 27 and a half minutes per game. That's a pretty high steal rate. That's like, you know, it's close to like what Shea would be at if Shea was playing fewer minutes. Actually, no, it's actually not even remotely close. I don't know, know why I'm saying that. But he's had seven steals his last three games, six in his last two. I thought about putting Bogdanovich steal prop on this. 
but it's not out yet. I kind of need to see it. Under 243 and a half. And also I would want what's his face to be out. The guy I've been talking about. DeAndre Hunter. There you go. Shout out to Texas Tech. Or was it Virginia? I can't remember. Under 243 and a half. Ah, my brain. See, here's the thing. I went to the Final Four in Minneapolis. It was Jarrett Culver going at it up against DeAndre Hunter. It was Virginia. So there you go. Correcting my work. Should probably talk about the NBA and players who actually matter. The Lakers taking on the Spurs. Victor Wembanyama confirmed matters. He is redonkulous playing the five. He's now played the five here for what? One, two, three six seven consecutive games here they took zach collins oh five games they've had zach collins out of the starting rotation here you know what's happened the rebound rate is unfair he's had double digit rebounds now in six in a row seven of his last eight and in his last three 2018 and 13 those are the rebounding totals he has nine stocks coming off of nine stocks we're talking six blocks three steals in this very same lakers matchup and this is very similar to the last one. Oh. Lakers Spurs. Now they're tangoing here yet again. Hopefully we have LeBron James out here and we don't even have to think about it. And Anthony Davis was questionable. He ended up playing in that game. It was really fun to watch him and Victor Wembanyama go at it. Two stick figures, aliens just of another world just going at it. I will be watching this game here again. But do I want to bet anything? Yeah, I do. This is a borderline lock, actually. And I know the people who look at box scores are going to freaking hate this play absolutely hate it but jeremy sohan re-entered the starting rotation now i don't like the complexion of this lineup <laughs> vegas is up 35 nothing <laughs> ah, football is funny anyway jeremy sohan as we look at the board here 10.6 points per game he re-enters the starting rotation zach collins comes off the floor if Zach Collins starts over Jeremy Sohan, that's the main reason this didn't become a lock. That is something that I feel like Pop could flip on a dime. But he's just shot the ball terribly since he re-entered five games ago. Four for 13, three for 10, two for six, three for 11, two for nine. Has not shot over 33.3% from the field in five consecutive games. But now you're getting it priced at nine and a half points to get him on the come up. That is what you want to be doing. Buy low, sell high. Buy low, sell high. But then down, that'd be like shorting somebody and then you're taking it over. And that's what we're going to be looking to do here with Jeremy Sohan. Averaging 10.6, the minutes have been there. The shooting has not. Positive regression is near friends. Borderline lock. But again, the only thing that keeps me a little bit trepidatious is just knowing that in any second, Popovich could say, you know what, Zach Collins? We'll play you next time with Midyama again. And that's probably happening sooner rather than later. My friends, BetMGM, the sponsor of our lovely program, get signed up at every sports book you can, especially when they're giving you great offers like this. It's $1,500 in bonus bets. When you sign up at the link below, you'll also get two months of Odd Shopper tools plus Discord access, $100 value, completely free. The positive EV tool that I talk oh so much about, market-based approach, the parlay builder, the fantasy optimizers, the, the free tools, everything that you could possibly want and desire to be good at sports betting in the market-based approach is available to you over at Odd Shopper. And then $1,500 in bonus bets over at BetMGM? That's a ridiculous allotment. So get yourself signed up. Get yourself exposure to every book you can, especially when they're handing out some goodies for you to go try it out. We shop for the best lines. I don't care which sports book. It is at. I don't care if it's DraftKings, FanDuel, Bet365, wherever you have it available in your state, that's where you want to take advantage. So let's do it, friends. Only if you're 21 and over. If you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. But sign up at the link below. Two more games. Let's get to it. Friends, smash that like button, subscribe button, notification bell as we talk a little Houston and Memphis. Walking in Memphis. Except for nobody's really walking. It's more like a... Like a quick trot here now defensively they've been much better than offensively but that shouldn't surprise everybody because you know they've had no john morant forever forever forever, forever, forever. and then desmond bain he ends up sitting out last time out oh gotham's reckoning but jaron jackson jr came to ball i loved the fact that i backed him in dfs there 42 and 40 minutes now back-to-back -back games they got torched by houston but you know jaron jackson jr has put up back-to-back -back 40 spots 41 and 44 points. Yeah, I might be having to look at you know, back in some capacity in the betting market one time, but don't have those props here yet. I, I know that they 
dropped maybe like 20 minutes ago, but I haven't updated everything in my sheet. And I don't want to give you bad information, but I can, I guess I can take a little gander here. Where is Jaron Jackson Jr. at here in this marketplace? Anyway, while I'm talking about that, let's get you to the actual play and then I'll round it out here with this exposure because, well, oh yeah, there it is. Alprin Shangun. Yeah, we're going to make that the play. We like this. 17 and a half points. I get Jaron Jackson Jr. is a good defender. I get that he's out there trying to block everything within reason. But, I mean, this is absurd here, Producer Jacob. We're going to fire up Alperin Shangun here. 17 and a half points. I think they might also look at a single game parlay action where we combine him. Yes, combine him potentially with one Jaron Jackson Jr. in some capacity. Do I expect 40 plus? No, 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 no. I do not. Hasn't resulted in a win. Well, the last time out, it didn't. But friends, Alperin Shangun, 17 and a half points. This is a guy who's just on the floor, a metric ton. Tari Eason been taking away a little bit of that usage. But again, now we're buying low. Only played 24 minutes against Memphis, but it was a wonky spot. He had four fouls, kind of a weird game script. And Tari Eason went completely berserk. Guy averages 20 per game. This is a really low number. 17 and a half points. Over. And the very last game of the night we go, my friends. The New York Knicks, the Phoenix Suns. Eric, you haven't had a lock yet. Welcome to the lock. I'm mad at the Knicks. I know you're mad at the Knicks. We're all mad at the Knicks. Minus five and a half. Go out and lay a dud against a G League basketball team in the Utah Jazz. Don't even know what I was watching. My eyes were bleeding throughout that game. No idea who came to play, why they came to play. Julius Randle's looked really good. No doubt about it. I will say Julius Randle starting to get back into form, making me a lot happier there, but no Mitchell Robinson on the interior in Phoenix. Uh, if Yusuf Nurkic has a concussion from getting hit in the head by Draymond Green, he hasn't shown it because he's been very, very, very good. Played 31 minutes there against Brooklyn. 15, 22, and 3. Yes, 22 there. Cleaning up the boards here for Phoenix. And now we are getting just all of the friends together here. Devin Booker, Kevin Durant. I mean, we saw Devin Booker play 36 and then 40 minutes there on the back-to-back. -back. Glad I didn't short him. Was really sad to see Kevin Durant get there by the hook at the very end of that game. And then Bradley Beal, that under was kind of easy, easier than it looked. Six for nine from the field. I expected him to take the major undercut. So ended up breaking even there on those points props that I shorted. That was just a huge bummer because I thought it was easy. And hey, we hit the under on the Kevin Durant assist prop. Again, that was Lindy's Locks update. Went two for three on the shorting of the Phoenix props. And I think there might be a capability of doing it tomorrow. We'll see where the numbers land here, but in the end, but. This is the thing. Phoenix is going to be a really good basketball team. There's a reason that they've been up there in terms of favorites there. And Brooklyn beating them was a really good thing. First of all, we didn't have Phoenix on the card. I wanted to see how these teams reacted. And Bradley Beal, he's going to take the he's going to take the undercut in terms of usage. But as they figure out floor spacing, as they figure out Kevin Durant and Devin Booker being able to share responsibilities with a shooter the level of Bradley Beal on the floor and possibly getting Eric Gordon back into the mix. He's a big one, actually. Eric Gordon, I think, is huge for this basketball team because that is a true shooter who all he's been in the past is a spot shooter. 40% from three, there's room for that to go up. 46.3% from the field, the guy is a useful winning basketball piece on the offensive end of the floor. Jordan Goodwin, not a complete zero there on the offensive end, although he played abysmal in his 27 minutes against Brooklyn, if anybody watched that game. And then Grayson Allen has a chance to got, uh, possibly get back as well. That's somebody that they want out there for a lot of minutes. And say what you will, Grayson Allen, he kicks dudes in the dick all the time, a la Draymond Green. But you know what? Yet another reason that Milwaukee has a championship because he can be that utility guy who out of the middle of nowhere, hey, I'm feeling good tonight. I'll score 25 for absolutely no reason whatsoever. Good to have those guys all on a floor together. Lots of injury news that could break the way of the Phoenix Suns and the Knicks. Without a true center out there, I think a Nurk eruption spot is not out of the question here. Now, it's a slow-paced game, lethargic game, but I think that plays into the half-court sets of Phoenix. And, well, you take last year's historical data of Beal, Booker, Durant, and you put them on the floor – I went out of the way to do it for you. Seven and a half. This is kind of like a likeish lock, but I put a full unit on it because it sounded like fun. Minus four and a half, friends. My favorite play of the slate here. Again, if you just want to go a half unit, I don't blame you. It's just fine. But Eric Gordon, Grayson Allen back, having some actual role players that can step into supporting units there and be shooters around Booker and Durant. I know they're great shooters themselves. They're going to do a lot of shooting. But the main thing is just get some pressure off of you. 
You don't want wide open looks for Eric Gordon too often. That's for damn sure. And that does it for another week of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks in the NBA Streets. You know what to do. Go to the comment section below. Let me know your favorite plays that exist here on Friday. If there's anything that stands out, hey, somebody put me onto the Victor Wembanyama uh, rebound train uh, from the comment section. I'm always looking. I'm always watching. And hey, if something you put there impresses me, I'll give you a shout out from time to time. That is for sure. And then, you know, when you want to troll me down there on the Twitters, I can always keep track. I'm always watching. Always watching. Anywho, producer Jacob, we're going to get ourselves the heck up out of here. I'll see you tomorrow talking a little NFL. Check out NFL Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks, breaking down every single game going on on Sunday. Maybe break down Saturday, too? Probably not. I don't know. There's three games Saturday. I'm going to be watching my Vikings with a puckered little you-know-what. Oh, early football game, too. Can't wait to feel disappointed all day on Saturday. My wife will love it. No different than any other day of your life. Thank you, producer Jacob. Until next time, friends, I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the NBA streets on Friday.